Here's a puzzle that will impress mittens. If you don't believe me, wait till the end and see for yourself. Now, before I say too much, if you'd like to pause, white only has one winning move. See if you can find what it is. And I will remind you, this pawn is going forward. This pawn is going this direction. White to play and win. All right, if you had a chance to look at that, let's talk about what's going on. Because when you first look at this position, it probably looks pretty simple. It lo almost looks like, wait a second, can't we just come over here, take the knight, and get a queen? I mean, look how far black's pawn is. And actually, you're almost right. King to f8, if black tries to push this pawn, king to g7, threatening the knight, we take the knight, we move our king, and we get the queen. And you are absolutely correct. We stopped the pawn before black is able to get the queen. This is a pretty easy win. However, black is not going to just be stupid and push the pawn without even thinking. Black has a very clever idea. And if we play the move king to f8, the game is a draw. Black will play king to d5. Then they'll play king to e6. And when we take the knight, look at this. Our king gets trapped in the corner and we have no way to move the king which means we have no way to move our pawn. All we can do is move our knight around. Even if we're we able to come up here and put the king in check, it would just go back and forth and constantly keep us trapped. And so eventually we have to bring the knight over here to stop the pawn and the game is simply a draw, okay? That's black's trick. And that is why we cannot just make a beeline for the knight and expect to win. So the only winning move in this position is the move knight to e3 check. And we're attacking the king and we're only giving black one option here. Black only has one option because they have to stay close enough to keep the king in range when we go for the knight. Okay, so for example, if they move away like this, we simply go here and we take the knight and we win. And this is kind of like what I showed you before. We just step to the side, we get the queen, easy win for white, okay? So what does black have to do when we put them in check? They have to go to d4, only move so that they can stay uh, in range. If we were to try to go here, they would come up with the king, okay? And it actually is the next move. We play king to f8 going for the knight. And black, like I mentioned, plays king to e5. And again, it's the same idea, right? If we go king g7, the king has to be able to come in and trap us, okay? So king to g7 is the next move. We're attacking the knight. And like I mentioned, black will play the move king to e6, okay? And so if we take, they will go here and the game is a draw. So in this position, we have only one winning move. What is it? All right, if you had a chance to look at that, the winning move for white is the move knight to d5. And yes, the king can take the knight, but black doesn't want to do that. Remember, as soon as the king gets out of range, we win. We take it, and the king can't trap us, and this pawn is too far. We simply slide over, we get the queen, and it's an easy win for us, okay? So our knight is kind of invincible, even though it looks like it can be taken. So we play knight to d5. What is black going to do? Well, they could try to push the pawn. Or they could make a king move, but they don't want to make a king move because if you look carefully, the king could only move here or here or here or here or here. And any of the king moves has the same problem. We take the knight and they can no longer trap our king. They need to be able to go here or here and they can't. So the king doesn't want to move. The knight could move to g6. We just take it. The knight can move to f7 or the pawn could be pushed. Okay, so let's start with the pawn pushes and then we'll come back to the main line here, which is knight to f7. Okay, first things first, a6 is a, a bad move. We simply have knight to c7 forking the king in the pawn. And once this pawn is gone, it's very easy for us. We will be able to win. Okay, so uh, they don't want to do that. If they play a5, well, then we have the move knight to f4 check and the king has to go up. And then we play knight to g6 check with this fork and the, the knight has to take us, but then we simply take and we get the queen next move and we win, okay? So both pawn pushes from black don't work. We already talked about they can't make a king move, they can't make a pawn move, which means the only move left for black is knight to f7. And now again, if you would like to pause, there's only one winning move for white. What is it? Well, the winning move in this position is knight to b4. And at first glance, it's like, what are we doing? Here's the point. Black has to make a tough decision about what piece to move next. If they move the knight away, something like this, we simply get a queen. They don't want to do that. If they move the king, well, they have to defend the knight, which means king to e7, but then they fall into this fork and they lose the pawn, which means the only thing they could really do is push the pawn. If they push it one square, 
we simply take it. If they push it two squares, we have knight to c6 attacking it. And then once they push it to save it, we have knight to d8 check, forking these guys, forcing the knight to move away, and we get the queen and win. And so because of that, black only has one move after we play knight to b4. Black only has one move to stay in the game. Can you find it? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is knight to h8. And it's the same idea. We can't take it because then king to f7 in the game is a draw. Our king is stuck. The pawn is here. Our knight has to guard the pawn. The king keeps us from ever getting out. Just goes back and forth all the game long. And the game is just a draw. So what do we need to play in this position instead of taking the knight to actually win? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is knight to c6. We're attacking the pawn. And we're also threatening something else, which I will show you in just a second. So first things first, the king has no good moves. You can't go to e7 because we took it away. If you move anywhere else, you're too far. And then I just take the knight, as I mentioned. You need to save your pawn. You don't want to go to a5, which means the only move left is a6. That's literally all you can play. Oh, and I should point out, if you try to play knight to f7, I have this check again. Uh, there's lots of ways to win, but this is probably the easiest. For forcing the knight, and then you get the queen. So black plays the move a6. If you'd like to pause, what's the winning move for white now? All right, we had a chance to look at that. The move is knight to e5. And you can see for the duration of this puzzle, our knight is jumping around. The king has had multiple opportunities to take it. And yet it never works out because again, if black takes, we're going to take the knight, get the queen, and it's an easy win. So what does black do instead? They could try a couple of things. Number one, they could try pushing the pawn, but then we simply take the knight and the king would like to be able to go to f7, but look at our knight controlling that square. We simply get the queen and we win. And then the other thing that black could try would be king to e7, but then we have knight to g6 check, forking these guys, also forcing the knight to capture and then we simply take it and get the queen and because of that it's a lost position for black so crazy puzzle i think mittens would be impressed by this one let me know your thoughts on that and i'll see you guys next time as always stay sharp play smart and take care